<laughs> so, uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode um, from Live Reality Games covering the Totem Pole Season 3. Uh, Liz and I are joined by mm -hmm. one of the finalists here, Sabrina. Sabrina, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Um, how is everyone tonight? Let's start. Liz, how's things, as they say, down under, if you don't mind that term? <laughs> yeah, um, it's good. Um, just had lunch. Just uh, chilling. Been an all right day. How about you guys? Thanks. Sabrina? I mean, just a day at work and now I'm home, relaxing, you know. Fantastic. Uh, so, uh, Sabrina, we are definitely super fans of you um liz and i said at the beginning of everything we we're like sabrina's one of the ones to watch like instantly yeah. like Yay. you connected with us pretty well <laughs> so so even before we get to the show um sabrina you have a little bit of a background in these games can you tell us your little bit of past experience i see you're sporting a special shirt by yes. chance Yes, hey. Sabrina Columbus, yay! Hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I've only played one of the game before Totem Pole, that was Big Brother Columbus. Season seven and you know, very first game last, so we filmed it last June, so 2019. Um, and I came into it like, I didn't really know what to expect. I was super excited because of course, like who doesn't want to play a Big Brother Survivor game? So uh, super we so, all do. yeah, I know it was just like, I didn't, I didn't realize this whole like live out of game community was a thing. I had no idea. And a friend of mine played season six, Kyle Gates. Um, I've known him for almost my whole life. And he was like, Hey, I'm playing a, a fan big brother game. I was like, well, what's that? And like, I got into it from him. Um, so yeah, I ended up winning that season, which was awesome. So yeah, I just kind of, it kicked off my passion for these games and decided to sign up for the totem pole pretty immediately <laughs> after I figured out what that was. So, <laughs> so yeah, so, so far it's not, I don't have like a super long resume yet, but yeah. It's a pretty hefty <laughs> resume. Like yeah. you win at like Big Brother Columbus and then you, spoiler yeah. alert for everyone out there, of course, if you're watching, typically you've already seen these before. So um. Sabrina, third place. Uh, fantastic. Probably one of the best stats in the community, by the way. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> and actually, you are probably one of our biggest like supporters, too. Every show that you're on, you always mention live reality games, and we totally appreciate that. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things where it's like, it's literally like the reason why you're playing those games, like is the, the community around it. So I think the shout out's important. Mm-hmm. Uh, so from your experience going into this new game, the totem pole for you, um, did you think that was going to present a target? Do you think people had watched Big Brother Columbus? Yeah. So I was actually really nervous about that. Like, even though, so like I said, we filmed June 2019 for Big Brother Columbus, but the episodes didn't premiere until like early fall and then went through to late fall, almost to Christmas time. And so Totem Pole, we filmed in February of this year. So right before all the coronavirus stuff. And so it was pretty close in between right. like the finale of Big Brother Columbus airing to the filming of Totem Pole. So I was super nervous. That's when they would recognize me. And it turns out the only person who actually knew anything was Josh. And he didn't tell me that he knew until the three of us were down like in the basement area waiting to come up for our questioning. Then he was like, so, Hey, <laughs> Big Brother Columbus. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Like I had seen, I had seen him in like the forums, like on Facebook and stuff. So I recognized his picture. So I, I knew of him as well, but mm -hmm. I didn't know like what he had done before, but he knew me. So I was like, Oh my gosh. So thankfully he didn't, you know, use it against me or anything, but yeah, he was the only person who knew. So yeah, I was like, thankful from, for that. From Josh's experience, he actually participated in one of the live reality games down in Florida uh, called Mayhem yeah. Manor, which is yeah. uh, starting up again mm -hmm. um, November 6th through the 9th. And we'll have coverage of that as well. But Sweet. getting back to the game, like you walk in, this is your second game. So you're sizing people up by now. You're on this big couch. What do you think of the cast? Like when you first see them? Yeah. So, oh, man. I was definitely looking at, so when I first, actually, when we first came in, we had all of our blocks on the table. And I mentioned this in the first episode, how the number of blocks didn't match the number of blocks on the totem pole. And so, so I immediately, I was like, Hey, there's people coming. Like I know there's people coming. It's gotta be past players. Like, I don't know who it's going to be, but I had a strong theory in my head that Jace was going to come back because of how he did on season two. And so I was already preparing myself for him to come back in my head. And so seeing him walk through the door, I was 
not surprised, but I was like, oh my God, I, I, I cannot have him on my bad side because he's a really good player. And so I was like, I want to work with this guy. Of course, it didn't pan out that way, but that was definitely in my head. And I also liked the idea of working with, oh, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of my very, very initial thoughts. Because very early on, I wanted to work with Josh and Shane. Like that was like pretty immediately whenever we first started talking together. Like that was like round one, like we were like on top of it. Um, and besides that, like there wasn't anybody that I was like fearful of, I guess, like I wanted to be open to working with everybody. Um, I don't know if I was thinking anybody would be a threat to my game per se, except for Jace, cause I knew he played well. Um, yeah, it was definitely more of like, I was more nervous again of being recognized and like people knowing how I played my last game. So I was a little bit worried of people targeting me. So that was kind of the thing on my mind at that point, like when we very first started. Uh, did that come into a factor when you when you started playing the game? Were you trying to play a little bit more like like a down low kind of game just based on your previous experience or did that? Yeah, kind of like, honestly, I feel like I played like the exact same game that I played in the Brother <laughs> Columbus, like not gonna lie, which I mean, it worked out well twice in a row. So why not? But I don't know, like, I feel like if I felt like if that was gonna be successful for me, like why not try it again? Like I don't want to deviate too far from it because I feel like that was comfortable and it worked. And so why not try it again? But also it's one of those things where yes, you have to play hard to keep yourself safe, but at the same time you have to play a little bit like low. Like I think I think floating is a strategy. Like people are always like, oh, like floating, like grab your life vest. But like I I really do think that floating is a strategy that you could actually put into the game of like that is your decision to do as a, compared to coasting which I, which i think is more of what people think as floating um mm -hmm. where they're not they don't know what's going on they're not doing anything about it they're just kind of like riding the wave to the end but um so my strategy was always to be going towards that floating situation but at the same time i will never throw a competition and i never have so like i still want to play hard like i still i got to the final round of a lot of those competitions this season so i was definitely trying i just wasn't, mm -hmm. just wasn't winning <laughs> until the end <laughs> you you won when it counted so there exactly. you go exactly i guess you know <laughs> Uh, Liz, what's your thought about, I've never heard that term before that Sabrina used, uh, floating besides coasting. Like, have you heard that before? Yeah. Um, I think it's like generally like associated with like um, Big Brother stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, what's the definition, I guess? Floating is like maybe not being in a set like alliance and just kind of going wherever. And then kind of, yeah. I kind of feel like that. Like floating, floating you choose to do. And that's like your like strategy that you make. And that, yes, maybe you have like one or two people that you're with, but like you're kind of like playing the field a little bit to keep yourself safe. Mm -hmm. But I think coasting is more like you really, you haven't made any like major decisions like that. Like you really don't know what's happening. You're just letting people take you and you're just kind of, yeah, letting, it, letting things happen and not like trying to make any decisions. Well, yeah. speaking of your uh, challenge, um, challenge willpower i guess you can say or determination the first challenge you did really well what was your thought about the first challenge um so for me i feel like that challenge you were just doomed if you got the weight like there was no like i was really hoping that and we all asked this actually as the game like as the rules were explained to us like we thought we were able to divide the weight like against like like different people instead of giving all of the weight to one person Hmm. So that's, that's the one thing I wish would have happened is that we were able to divide things because then it would make it a little more of a fair shot for somebody who got weight. Cause once everybody got the weight, like they were done for, like we knew they were out. So then it was more of like a target of like, Oh, let's just get this person out instead mm -hmm. of trying to make things a little more like under the radar or like maybe have a better chance of like making alliances at that point. Um, Cause I feel like there could have been a lot of bargaining done on that end if we were able to split things up. So I feel like I got very lucky that challenge because nobody gave me weight. Um, I did not expect that. I was just waiting for somebody just to give it to me just because it's the first challenge. Everybody gets, you know, it's kind of like a whatever thing at that point. Um, so yeah, I think I definitely got lucky for sure. But like, I knew I wasn't gonna win it um, because the other girls were running way faster than me. <laughs> so I was like, this is not <laughs> I was like, well, okay. I was like, I got as far as I can get. <laughs> 
Well, that was actually a question I had coming up. Did you like throw it purposely? Because you made it pretty no. far. You made it to the final round. So no, I really didn't. Like I said, I was kind of surprised I got there that I didn't get any weight because at that point I hadn't made any like deals or handshakes or talked to anybody right before that challenge happened. So I was like, like I, said, I was expecting to get weight. Um, so when I did it, and like the entire time when I was running, I like. I was legitimately trying, but like people were way faster than me. And so when I got to the end, seeing who was next to me, I knew they were going to beat me. So that's why I talked to Tessa and, and Maddie at the end. Cause I was like, there's no freaking way. Like I'm, they're going to beat me. Yeah. I feel like that was like a strong, like characteristic of your game. Like right from the start is like just these like sort of quick conversations and like, you know, just like noticing things like the uh, exposed card and yeah. stuff like that. It's, like, <laughs> just quick thinking basically. I feel like it's especially in the totem pole because it's so fast paced I feel like it's super important to make those decisions on the fly to save yourself or else like you could be screwed early because like two people go home every round so it's like you got to be on top of it and when I made the deal with Tessa and Maddie I was just like I don't know that was like the only thing I was like okay well I'm not gonna win so if somebody else wins keeps me safe great and it's, I don't want to go home first and the exposed card like I watched seasons one and two obviously before I came on to season three and so it was one of my goals to find a car I thought it'd be really cool I was just really excited about it and so since like once Wesley started filming I was like looking like around my surroundings I don't want to be too obvious but I was like hey like there's a card around here somewhere I know it's going to be here where is it and so when I picked up the card I legitimately thought they had just put the card there when I grabbed it like I didn't think it was there the entire challenge and so watching back the footage was really funny to me because I was like, oh my God, I didn't know. It was like there the whole time. But yeah, I was really happy and proud of myself that I found my card. <laughs> you literally made that comment. You were like, this could not have been here this entire time. That's what this I thought. I really did think that like Wesley put it there like, like halfway through this, you know, people coming up, he just like, put, you know, put it there with mm -hmm. nobody looking. Like I did not think it was there the whole time. So, <laughs> but yeah. I, I was proud of your is Survivor. Um, what are the odds that Sabrina is going to find an idol in Survivor? Um, I think pretty high. I think like, you know, I think she'd be the kind of person who would like do very well at like, say she has one of those idol clues that's like, um, you know, you gotta um, go to the challenge, like in the challenge and find you know, oh my god, I would, idol. Love, I would love that. that. Yeah, I feel like that's that's the right right thing for Sabrina, you know? <laughs> honestly that would be really cool because whenever they started doing that i was like oh that's real sneaky but like it's always so fun to see them go for it and like actually like do it it's so cool yeah. um well speaking of that first challenge i'm getting a little bit of feedback here yeah. i don't know why it just started oh there we go uh, so the first challenge, you made that deal with Tessa and Maddie, and thank goodness you did because you were completely safe. Yeah. Um, did you, uh, you made that deal. Did you have any, I don't know, doubts about who to send home that first round or how vocal you should be? I just, I feel like the first rounds are always like, the excuses rounds of like, oh, this person didn't talk, so send them home. Or this person's really loud, send them home. Like, there, I feel like there's never like a legitimate reason to send somebody home in the first round. People just find something to like place blame on. So it just makes it easier for everybody to justify it. And so I feel like at that point, you have to really play the middle because like I said, if you're not socializing and you're not getting to know everybody, then that could be a reason why people would send you home. Mm -hmm. And that could happen with Big Brother Columbus, the first episode when Robert went home. So that was definitely yeah definitely hard and yeah. but also again at the same time you can't be like over the top either because people will be like oh you're a threat like get you out of here so yeah and i think bringing back to that big brother columbus comment it was i think robert was sent home primarily because he lived in that same town and he didn't travel like a lot of people i think i think that was that was part of it but mm -hmm. like a lot of people said it like to send him home because he he, I mean, also he did arrive there last. So that was just kind of like bad luck on that, you know, and, but he, I guess, wasn't as, you know, talkative and wasn't socializing as much as everybody else was, which yeah, it's a crappy reason, but against a first round thing, it's like, what, do you, what can you do? I don't know. It's, it's really hard. Yeah. I'm breaking this up because Liz traveled really far and back here in Survivor <laughs> and her oh my gosh. came out too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yes, uh, Backyard Survivors also airing. Uh, we have lots of, we have a full schedule here at Live Reality Games. So, so I, know, I saw, I saw the it on the Instagram. I was like, oh my gosh, there's like a ton of shows. A ton of yeah, Survivor shows right now. It's crazy. 
Uh, so uh, first challenge goes, um, let's see, were you, no, Tessa made a comment too, um, which was a little scary. Uh, Jace kind of did the same thing later, placing, like Tessa said, here's my alliance, here's what we talked about. So I'm placing oh, yeah. all the three girls on top. <laughs> did you did you find that disheartening or were you a little more scared after that? Because you had Not a really. Not really, because in my mind, it wasn't like, a straight up alliance to me it was more of just a deal at that moment. Like I wouldn't have been mad if it like came into an alliance later. Um, I definitely wasn't like opposed to that, but in my mind in that moment, it was just a deal. So I wasn't nervous about it. Cause if people were, were to ask me, which nobody did actually, nobody talked about it after that. Like nobody wow. brought it up. Nobody asked me questions about it. So it, it didn't end up being any kind of issue. Um, but if people had asked me about it, I would have been more like, okay, yeah, well it was just a deal for this one time, this one round. But yeah. at the same time, like, if something had happened where I was in charge of helping like Tessa or Maddie, then I would have done it. Like I would have repaid the favor, especially to Tessa because she was the one who placed us. So I definitely like had her back on the next time, but I never got a chance to do that with her. Like I never had the chance to be in power to save her or to help her out. Yeah. That was a kind of a uh, follow through on the, um, the helping Tessa, like you always wanted to work with Tessa, but it never worked out, unfortunately. No, so. yeah, because like I said, I, I definitely had her back. Like I wanted to help her, like the first chance I had, but I never got that chance, which sucks. I really like her, and it was it was hard to. That was a really hard round whenever like she left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our first vote outs were uh, Nicole and Asher in that first yeah. round. Um, yes, they seem to be the Asher, my favorite, and Liz's favorite. Yes. Nicole at first, so oh no, um, <laughs> we had terrible picks. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, but thankfully, <laughs> like you made you pulled it out for us though. Like, thank you yeah. for like bringing our stats a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Yay. <laughs> um, so the next challenge coming up is another challenge that you kind of already know. Like you made a comment a little later in that episode. You're like, mm -hmm. I knew mm -hmm. it this entire time. So. Yeah, as, as soon as they gave us whiteboards, and I was like, oh my God. Like, because we had that same challenge in Big Brother Columbus, and I hated it. Everybody hated it because they were like it was way more intense than Big Brother Columbus. Like it was like really mean questions. And we're just like, why do we have to do this? But um, we, so we got actually, before we got the whiteboards, we got a questionnaire um, and we had to answer all those questions. And when I got that, I was like, mm -hmm. and then we got the whiteboards and I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I was like, I know what this is. Um, so yeah, so I figured I didn't, I don't know. I, I thought I had a decent shot because, but it was still hard because it was only round two. So it's hard to kind of see everybody's personality yet. Like we're still kind of feeling each other out. Um, so it's hard to really choose what people would say is the, the majority answer. Mm -hmm. And you made yeah. it pretty far. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely did decent in it. Um, I think it was Kadia who was it Kadia who sent me out? Yeah, because Jace got mad at Kadia for for moving what? his block, so she was like, "Fine, I'll move Sabrina's," and then she moved mine, and I was like, "Okay, like, <laughs> fine, I guess." So yeah, I think she was the she was the one who put my my block like in the final, like in the box. Oh, and I, yeah, I moved. So I moved Connor. Like no, I was going to say, twice. you and Connor kind of oh, no, started a thing. Was awesome. this something that you had planned on? A little no, bit of rivalry? It, no, oh. it was so ridiculous. Like I, I moved his block because he was one of the only people I didn't talk strategy with up to that point. And so I was like, well, no harm, no foul. Cause like, we don't talk, like we're not like against or for each other at this point. So why not? So I did it. And then of course you repaid the favor, which I totally understand. But for some, I don't know why I thought this, but I legitimately <laughs> thought he moved my block twice. I don't know why. So like, I felt so dumb looking back at the footage and oh my, I was so stupid. And like, I was like, oh my God, this is so ridiculous. Why did I do that? And so when I moved it again, like he was like, I didn't move your plug. I was like, I thought you did. I'm so sorry. And like, it was, I mean, it was fine after that. Like we, it was just a total misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't want to move multiple people's blocks either. Like I wanted to stick with one and that's it. Cause I don't want to make any more enemies than you have to. Um, but yeah, some people moved different people's blocks. And I was like, that's a bold strategy, Cotton. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I love hearing the strategy about why, like, why you chose things, why you stuck with someone. It's super smart. Yeah, it's definitely like one of those things where it's a very, I thought it was a very social like challenge. So like you have to be really thinking about it. But yeah, some people were definitely very open with how they felt about people. Um, like whenever Jackie moved Madison, I was like, oh boy, because <laughs> it, was, it was a very like, like she had wasn't even thinking about it. She was like, move it, and I was like, okay. <laughs> so we we see how people are feeling now. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah. Um, uh, what's next? So uh, the big um, clap gate, as it's called. Oh, clap is... gate. I coined clap gate. Hashtag clap gate. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, that was. Oh my gosh. So whenever you don't see this on film, but like whenever we were waiting for to see who would win, if it was if Kadia was going to choose to win or give it to Derek. So I don't know if you can tell in any of the other episodes, but like where the couch is behind the couch, like where the bottom five would stand, mm -hmm. there was a, a door to the left, which led to the kitchen. And so all of us yep. were crowded in that doorway, like l looking to see who was going to win. And so like, but the camera was turned the other way facing Kadia and, and Derek. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us were like, we wanted Kadia to take the win because we wanted her just to, it was her choice to win. And so we're like, why would you not choose to win at that point? Like, don't throw yeah. it. Like you would be first off throwing it in front of everybody. So everybody would know you threw it. So like, what's the point? And second off, like if you earned a win, you earned a win. Like, why not? Like just take it. Um, so it was never anything in my, I mean, in my mind, in my heart, it was nothing against Derek. Like we weren't rooting against Derek. Maybe some people were, I don't know. I was not cause I liked Derek and I wanted to work with him. Mm -hmm. um, but it was definitely, I didn't, I didn't expect like the whole outcome of it for it to happen the way it did. Um, I understand why he got mad because of the way like he felt that people were perceiving things and like wanted things to go. And that like he thought that people wanted him to fail. So I understand why he was upset and why the outburst happened. It was definitely very entertaining on my end to see everything happen. Um, it was a lot of yelling and a lot of crying and it was just, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Cause like the, cause the cameras kept going after it all happened. And then you saw, obviously he went outside and Kadia went out there to try and talk to him. And then everybody else was inside. Like, what's, what do we do? I don't know what, what's going on. Cause we, we had a little bit extra time before the placement. It was just a mm -hmm. whole mess. Um, so I didn't even get to talk to Kadia before the placement. I think she, she pretty much only talked to Derek um, before she made the placement. So I don't think anybody really knew what was going to happen or what she was going to do. So that was kind of a, a whirlwind of a round for sure. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, you first talked about having Derek in the um, Derek in the Alliance. Um, did that give you a little bit of a worrisome as if you should continue with that Avenue or maybe a little bit. And I think I mentioned that too, mm -hmm. during the, during the show, like, so whenever me and Josh originally made the Alliance, cause it was me and Josh first like together. And whenever he approached me and I was like, I was actually going to come talk to you as well. Like, this is great. And so I was like, I really like Shane. I'd like to bring him in this Alliance. And then Josh was like, I really like Derek. I'd like to bring him in. And I was like, great. Like I'm totally cool with that four person Alliance. Awesome. I was like, I like Derek. I like Shane. I think they're both good players. Like, let's go. Um, so it was just kind of a weird situation. Cause like we never really got the chance to like fully like, make things official really both with Shane and Derek, honestly, like we never actually like the four of us, we know the four of us never came together and we're like, this is an Alliance. It was just kind of like started to go that direction. Um, yeah, definitely. I was definitely closer with Shane than Derek at that point, but I still want to work with him and I was trying so hard to like figure out how to make things come together officially, but it was just, I don't know. It just ended up being so weird how that didn't happen. I don't know why, but, <laughs> but it just kind of ended up, it ended up obviously working out because of, you know, final four, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. But whenever that happened, I definitely was a little bit nervous because I didn't know if that would make a target on him and subsequently on myself or Josh or Shane. Um, but I was still open to it because I wanted to see what would happen. Cause it was only round two. So like, I, I feel like you can't judge a person's game off of like one round or like one thing that happens. Um, so I was definitely still looking forward to like the rest of the game to like continue trying to work with him for sure. Well, um, after totem pole placements go up, you actually get the honor of being the switch this round, right? Oh my God. Yeah. One? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I was so, completely, congrats. thank you. I was completely shocked. I I did not think that was going to happen. I personally thought it would be Jada or maybe even Connor. Um, but yeah, I was completely shocked that I got the switch. So yeah, that was, that was fun. And of course I switched Connor, <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, it didn't matter. Like I didn't switch anybody in the bottom five. So I, cause I didn't want to make anybody upset. I don't want to cause any waves yet. So I was like, yeah, let's make this easy. Mm -hmm. It's whatever. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, that leaves Derek to be um, eliminated from that one then. So yes, do, were you kind of at, do you kind of wish you would have taken that switch back or anything? Or do you think you should have just kept it the same, played safe? Hmm. 
That's a good question. I feel like at that point, because the entire house is looking at Derek, like, I feel like I probably wouldn't have switched him from the bottom just because he would automatically know that like I wasn't willing to work with him if I did that. And that would have already been like, a, oh, they're a pair because as you saw the whole trio thing happening, like I don't, I don't want to be associated with a duo because then it would be the same situation where either him or I would probably have been voted out or whatever. So mm -hmm. of course I want to keep my eyes on the other trio instead of me and other people that I was potentially working with. Mm -hmm. um, so probably not, but I was also, surprised that Kadia put him at the bottom. I didn't know about their whole conversation that happened. So I, when I watched it back, like that's when I saw it for the first time of like the actual explanation of what was going on and about him making the deal to, you know, get one of the persons to save him and all that like stuff going on. So I didn't know anything about all of those conversations. So that was really interesting to see back and see the strategy, which it's not a bad strategy. Um, oh, Kyle Gates, hello Kyle Gates. <laughs> I shouted you out, Kyle. Uh, yeah, the guy we have to thank uh, you for bringing Sabrina into this yes. community. So, Kyle, thank you, thank you. But um, yeah, I I I think it's a good strategy on Derek's part. It's just, I mean, yeah, it obviously didn't work out the way the way he wanted yeah. it to. But I mean, it made sense. Mm -hmm. He he thought he was going to be the switch, and that just didn't work out. So yeah, right. Um. So let's see here. Um, then we lose Jada in the vote. Jada yeah. goes home. But it brings us to a big comeback challenge. So we have the mm -hmm. first four eliminated people. We have Nicole, Asher, Derek, now Jada in the bottom. Um, you said, of course, you wanted to work with Derek. And it sounded like you didn't really mind anybody else coming back. You just more would no. work for Derek. Is that right? Yeah, because... Honestly, once they announced that it would be a battle back, I just I just knew Derek was coming back. Like, as much as I love Asher, Data, and Nicole, like I feel like Derek, like if it was a physical competition, like I Derek was gonna win. And so I just I don't know, I had a feeling who's gonna come back. And I would have like either way, like whoever came back, like I hadn't established any kind of working relationship with Nicole, Jada, or Asher, but I wouldn't have mind creating that with them because I do like them a lot and they're very nice people. And so I was like, oh, well, that'd be like a fun alliance to have or to work with. But um, yeah, I was okay with anybody coming back, honestly. There wasn't anybody that I thought was going to target me or not, I guess, potentially want to work with me. And nobody was coming after you, at least for a little bit. Yeah, not that I knew of, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, one of my favorite games was the uh, find the baggage. You run around the oh house God. like a big Easter egg hunt. One of yes. my favorite things to watch, even everyone. And then all the shots of somebody runs into a room, and then right behind them, there's a tag. Yes. They don't notice. So it's super fun to watch at home. It's super fun to play at home. Anybody could play it at home. It's oh called God. Easter. Um, but <laughs> how was your experience on that? Uh, you had a little bit of help. Yes. So yeah. that was my that was my favorite challenge, hands down. Like that was so much fun because all I could think about was hide and go veto. And I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be so much fun. Um yeah, I actually am terrible at Easter egg hunts, like at my family's house. And so I was a little bit nervous, but I was excited because it would be fun, but I didn't think I would do very great. Um so I had like I think I had like one or maybe two in my hand, and Shane is like, here, I have ten. And I was like, what? <laughs> where did you find all these how so did he, he not win like i don't understand i, I don't know and so <laughs> so he started he started automatically giving me some and i was like oh thank you. so like that kind of solidified me and shane all like that he still wanted to work with me and trust me i was like this is great and so i told him i was like give some to josh and so he did um so we ended up you know staying for a while in the game and so i guess shane was saying that like a lot of his were really high up and so okay all of the producers were like six feet tall. I know, oh, no. like I, they were all humongous people. And so I feel like most of them were like up higher just because they're so tall and I'm only five, four. And so like, I, I was looking like low and then Shane was looking high cause he's also very tall. And so he found a ton that were like on top of like the doors and like on the fans and the ceiling and yeah. stuff like that. And all of mine, I found like under rugs or like underneath a trash can, like that kind of thing. And I looked in the laundry room at one point, but like I was so ticked off because like they told us that there was none in like the main living room, like by the couches. Because when I first came in, I flipped over all of the couch cushions and they were like, no, 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 no. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> tell me this. Uh, so, so like that's the comment that Wes made. Wes is like, don't, it's not in the cushions. Yeah, not yeah. Because the, the very it's first round, like, yeah, I wrecked it like in the first round. And then they were like, okay, it's not there. And so <laughs> I looked in, there's a laundry room like right behind the wall of the living room. And so I went there 
there because like the door was open because he told us that any room that has a door open could have a tag. And so I looked there multiple times and there was never a tag in any, like not in the washer or the dryer or nothing. I was so mad because that, that was time that I wasted to like find tags. And it turns out that most of the tags were in those three bedrooms that you see most like strategizing in, in like most of those rounds. So that really sucked. But yeah, once we got to the final round when it was just me and Jace looking for the necklace, I was like, I am not winning this challenge because like it was like a good 15 minutes of us looking like it was a long time and the entire time we we're like you got it yet you got it yet <laughs> like, we're like, we're like i was like going so slow at that point and the guy following me um uh with the camera was it who was it who was following me oh that's gonna bother me um well yeah kyle i feel the same way every time that big brother does it my panic just my ocd is like oh literally wesley was gonna be so mad (laughs) because we were just like going crazy i am trying to find was it justin okay that's really gonna bother me one of the producers We'll come back and re- Spencer. Re- Spencer. Re- okay. No, I got Spencer, it. Okay. No, Spencer. Spencer was following me because we all had basically one producer following us with a camera for the most part while we looked, especially when we got to the like later rounds. So Spencer was following me with his camera, and like I was just like do do do. I was like looking behind the toilet, and I was just like, hey, like this. Look, I was just, I was like I know I'm not gonna find this thing. Um, <laughs> so it sucked because I didn't get anything. I didn't get a power card, a secret advantage, or the top of the totem pole, but. I think that worked out to my advantage because Madison found one of the cards and whenever Shane and Madison found a card, everybody else knew it because Wesley told us that there was two cards and the top of the totem pole. So everybody knew, but obviously Jason got the top of the totem pole, so it doesn't matter. But um, everybody knew at that point that Shane and Madison had a card and everybody also knew that Madison had two cards now because Jerrica told everybody else about her other card. And so (laughs) it put a target on them, not on me because I didn't find anything. I don't have a card because nobody knew about my exposed card. So I was kind of in the clear for that round because I didn't get anything. Mm-hmm. So that kind of totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. I didn't know if you were trying to avoid the necklace, but it's just no. your bad, your nope, bad finding bad. skills. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the opposite of you looking for the card. Like the first day you were like, first I don't know. Hour, I, like, card there, found it. I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know why. I have no idea. I don't know why it was so bad. Like, <laughs> It's just like, well, it is what it is. <laughs> I didn't want them to get in the finals. Like, it's, it's fine. <laughs> I think Liz might need to reassess your idol finding skills. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. You're better than me. Like, <laughs> I can't I find idols unless they're literally, like, handed to me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. Um, at this point, I'm curious, like, we have seen a lot of people call you Sabrina, but you also earned a few other nicknames. You have Sa- Sabs, mm-hmm. Sab, Baby Girl. <laughs> like, when did these nicknames start? Did you develop them yourself? Or you're just like, call me this, or? So on a lot of social media stuff, I go by Sabrizi. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, it's just oh, fun. Yeah. Like whenever I, I think that started happening when I was in PT school, like somebody called me that and I was like, that's cool. I'll just go with that. So I put that on, that's on all my social media tags. Um, but um, my, a lot of my friends call me Sabs. Um, and so during the second round competition with the whiteboard, uh, Wesley asked us to write our names on the board. So I put Sabs and then I, I, I held it up and then Derek looked and he goes, oh, Sabs. Okay. And he started calling me Sabs. So like on all of his confessionals, he says Sabs like for like every time for my name. And so people just started calling me that. So yeah. <laughs> Well, cool. Yeah. See, that's one of the things that I, you know, I just wondered, like it was yeah. mentioned in the show, but there was never like an explanation. So right. nice little behind the scene yeah. knowledge there. there. Yeah. Um, so um, Jace wins, as we talked about. He finds mm-hmm. the necklace. Mm-hmm. Um, he ranks them. There's a save. And then there's a re-rank. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, Jackie and Jace. Uh-huh. But you... Uh, <sighs> make a little quick little move. That, so that was so stressful because like I knew at that point that I would be in the bottom five just because I had tried to work with Jace a couple of times already like I had talked whenever he first came in I talked to him but nothing like really panned out and then when we were waiting for the final round of the find your baggage I think I said this in my confessional I told him, I was like hey Jace like if I win I'll keep you safe and 
I was hoping for him to be like, oh, yeah, me too. Like another little deal. And he was like, thank you. And that was Who it. does that? I, know, does I was that? like, I was like, well, that's not good. I was like, I don't like that. And then. Hold and on, then hold whenever, on. We can back up. Be like, Jace, where's the strategy? Where's okay. the strategy? My question is the strategy of his placement, because he very clearly showed his lines of his alliance, like immediately. And he actually said that before he placed it. He was like, these are the people that I trust. Here you go. Here's like a whole big fat target on the people that I work with. And it's like, why would you do that? Like, I understand keeping like your, like Kadia, cause everybody knew they were working together. Like that's not a, yeah. you know, a, a secret. So I understand putting her like number two, but then maybe kind of like spread things out a little bit. Um, so that was definitely, like I said, I, once he said that, I knew I was going to be at the bottom cause we were working together. Um, but thank God that Josh, well, sort of like, so, so Josh switched me and I was like, this is great. I feel safe again. But then the re-rank happened. I was like, I'm not safe again. <laughs> like, this is bad. Like, I literally went from up, or I went from down to up to way down. And it was such a roller coaster in like five minutes time. And whenever they announced what the, the, the thing was and that Jackie would be would be helping him re-rank, I was like, okay, this is literally my only shot to not go home is Jackie right now. And so that's why, like, I, I don't know, they show it very well in the filming, but, like, I turned to her, like, before she walked up. And I was like, Jackie, like, I got you like, please keep me safe. Like I will repay you. And I would have, again, if I like had the trouble, well, I kind of, well, kind of, kind of did whenever the whole Luke and Jackie vote happened, but yeah, exactly. I wish I could have done more. Like I wish I was in more, I'll get more power to do things to help people, but I never got the chance. Um, so well, you did, I, you like vocally express like the fact that Jackie should stay in this game. Like you, yeah. uh, you three went up to bat for her. Like there's right. not more, there's not much more you can do. Like, so yeah. anyway, yeah, that, that was hard, but you, you did your thing. So, but yeah, so like Jackie was going up there and I was like, oh my God, I was like, I don't know. I didn't know at that point who Jace's target was. And I feel like I never really knew that round, like who he really wanted to go home um, because the whole, you know, situation. Like, I don't know if it was Shane because I know him and Shane were kind of at odds the entire time. I don't know if it was me. Like I had no idea. Um, so when we got to the re-ranking, I was, I was surprised that he didn't send home Madison because that's what would have happened had he not picked her like third to last. Mm -hmm. um, that would have been most likely the outcome. Uh, so I didn't know what was happening there. I know Madison thought that she was working very well with Jace at that point. Um, so she was upset that Jace didn't choose her earlier in the re-ranking. Um, so I think she was very questioning on that because she had told us that like she was working with him and that they were good. Um, so seeing that was also very strange to me that he waited that long, but then, ended up choosing her and so for me sitting there with Tessa like I thought I was a goner because I thought Tessa and Jackie were like better like closer than mm -hmm. like me and Jackie were because at that point like I like Jackie and we talked and we strategized together and but we never officially made any kind of alliance or we're really working together so I thought she was like that with Tessa so I was like I am so like I'm done and I was like I feel like such a loser and I was like I'm about to go home right now I was like this is awful <laughs> and I was like I feel like Kat from uh, survivor blood versus water which is like nobody wants to date somebody who <laughs> doesn't make it a jury <laughs> and i was like that's exactly what i felt like because i wasn't jury yet so i was like oh my god i was like i can't leave like i can't win a game and then leave before jury i was like this sucks and so when jackie chose me i was like obviously it's extremely relieved but like i was a little bit surprised like i didn't expect that so thank god for jackie but <laughs> but it was really sad seeing tessa go because i really like tessa and she was really sweet and so it was definitely a bittersweet moment for sure and it just has to come down to your quick wits and be like, you are just on the spot. Like, what's my best choice here? What am I going to do to save myself? So Right. I, I, I really had to at that point. Like, I didn't know what else to do. I was like, literally, I was like begging. Like, just, I was like, Jackie, please. Like, don't, like, don't let me go. So, yeah, that was definitely like a desperate like plea for help. But thank God it worked. And then we've got the fourth challenge. Yep. Is that right? challenge we're on now so Honestly, it's so blurred in my head like i i need this like, even though we just watched it like i need this like play by play because it's so like mm -hmm. jumbled in my head uh, yeah. there was something i was gonna pop back to i don't remember so fourth challenge time let's go okay <laughs> yeah so the whole uh the whole balcony thing yeah it's the oh, unscramble it? the puzzle yep oh what's that next oh my gosh yeah. okay mm -hmm. Yes. So that challenge, like whenever they told us that I was like thinking, I was like, I'm going to get this. Cause like, I love word puzzles. I love like 
crosswords, like any kind of like mental game. Like I love that. So I was like, I can do this. I got this. Um, and it got to the point where we were running back and forth so much. And I was trying to go from start to finish. That was my original plan. I was like, oh, I might as well just solve it. Like, why not? And then after like a couple rounds of running back and forth, like everything just started getting like, I got like flustered and I was like, I'm not remembering these things. Like, I don't know if I can do this. And I was like, I gotta switch my strategy. Like I can't do this. And so I was like, that's when I was like, Hey, start from the bottom. Cause usually the bottom tells you like what to do instead of being like the blah, 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 blah. Like usually the, the point is at the very bottom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm just going to start there. Like I screw this, screw the top part. I'm going to go. And so then that's when, I found out like one, like the very bottom, like one of those words was balcony. Cause I was like, I gotta pick the longest word. Cause the longest word is probably the most important word. And so let's just go with that first. And so when I saw balcony, I was like, okay. Like I wanted to prove to Josh and Shane that I was like loyal to them and that I wanted to like trust them and continue to work with them. And I was like, well, the, like Josh was like right there and we were alone. And I was like, this is a perfect opportunity to do that. Um, so that's when I told him like, this word is balcony, like do what you, you know, do what you want with it. Like go to the balcony. Um, so that's when Josh went out and he grabbed the necklace. Mm-hmm. And that part was really stressful because whenever he, whenever he ran outside, like I stayed inside and I was like watching everybody run out. Cause after he ran out, of course, everybody else started running out. Um, and there was like five people on the balcony and I was just, I was inside the living room just watching out the door to see who's going to get it. And then Jace was out there and I was really scared for him to get the necklace again, because I was knew I was going to end up back in the bottom again if, if he did. And so I was like, Oh my God, please, Josh, I was like, please get this necklace. Oh my God. And so when I refound it, I was like, yeah, I was like, thank God. I was like, this is awesome. Like I was so happy. <laughs> and thank goodness you weren't the one to actually go on the balcony first. You'd, you yeah, would never find it. So. No, like I, yeah, I really don't think I would have found it, honestly. Like that would have been bad. So I'm really, really glad he found it. <laughs> so then uh, similar to um, Derek's big hip, hip, hooray, um, either also clapped oh my God. going back to the game. <laughs> it looks to do a hip, hip, hooray. So going back to Derek really quick, whenever he had his big, yeah. like when he, when he ran into the house, like that was one of the moments <laughs> I remember the most clearly is when he fell on his butt. I don't know why, but I like laughed so hard. I was like, oh my God, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like tell him that like like post film and I'm like hey so remember when you fell like <laughs> <laughs> I love you Derek <laughs> that has to be one of the clips if this season is down to like a five minute recap show just run in fall down perfect. yes back in God, the game. it's so funny and like he um there's also a film that's I mean or a video that's not obviously on the film um I don't know if it was Wesley using his phone or something but I think they they were telling him that there was a battle back because whenever you walk out the front door like that was like your you know exit but I guess once he left, like Wesley came out there and was like, hey, there's a battle back. And so he was, he like fell to the ground. And he was like, oh my God, this is great. And like Wesley was filming him and it was, it's a really funny video. And he gets up, he's like, okay, I'm good. We got this. <laughs> oh, I remembered what I was going to pop back to real quick. Yes. Because um, you were, you were questioning um, Jackie's and Jace's like reasoning why they made the decisions and yeah. why they- mm-hmm. We don't know either. Uh, we both reached out to uh, um, Jackie and tried to get Jackie on here for the reasoning. Jace, um, I can't find Jace online and I can't find him. But anyway, uh, Jace and Jackie, if you do want to come on, explain your side of the story, we would love to hear from you as well. Yes, I'd yes. also like to know. <laughs> Where is the strategy, Jace? Where is the strategy? <laughs> but so um, what was your take on Luke's big hip hip hooray? Like it's okay. his time to shine. So he so, gets the switch. Josh legitimately did not tell anybody that like Luke was going to be at the bottom. Like he really like, he didn't tell anybody. So like him, so me and Jace, or, or not Jace, me and Shane were definitely like, oh, okay. Like, cause like we knew it wasn't going to be us. So like we were just kind of waiting to see who it would be. Mm-hmm. And so to see him on the bottom was really like, that took, that took me by surprise. I was like, oh, okay. Like this is going to be like an interesting round. Um, so I knew that Shane had the reverse switch. He told me when he found it. Um, and I don't know if I was the only one who knew about it. Um, but cause I told him and Josh about my exposed card and they were the only two who knew about it. Um, so yeah, I think, I think, I don't know if Shane just told me or not, but anyways, I knew about it. So I didn't know what was going to happen, but once, um, Luke was the switch, and like switch Shane, I was like, oh, Shane's about to pull his car out. Like, I'm pretty sure this is about to happen. And so whenever Luke was the switch and did his little woo, oh my God, that was one of the funniest parts of the season. Like, just, oh my God. <laughs> he was like, he did not care. He was like, yes. And like, it was, just, it was hilarious. And then when Josh was like, you know, you still got your whole, you got a whole clown costume on or whatever he said. Oh my God, that part was great. And we like talked about that, like, 
immediately post filming for like months about like <laughs> having your clown costume on. Like we have a group chat, like of like and like a group Snapchat and stuff. And so it's like it's constantly those references are being brought up of like a, be the clown and like all that. It's hilarious. Um, but yeah, so seeing him get all excited, I was like, oh no, because I looked at Sh I looked at Shane and I was just like, and he was like. <laughs> and like in the, there's a there's a there's raw footage that wasn't um quite shown it's like right before shane uses his card he like as soon as luke gets up to the front he sticks his hand in his back pocket and he's like about to pull the card and he's just like <laughs> he's like he, he, he. he's like, he's about he's to like i'm ready to go yeah <laughs> so seeing him do that i was like this is going to be like that was like the most ironic, like best thing that's happened, like especially like just in that round, but like one of the best things I think that happened the entire game was seeing that whole spiral of like Luke being happy, him being the switch, Shane literally like reversing that switch. Like, oh my God, it was just perfect. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. It was like TV gold. Like I loved it. <laughs> it was so at, funny. At this point, um, both Josh and Shane says you're their number one. Like both yes. of them are like my final Sabrina. My yes. ride or die, Sabrina. Like mm -hmm. you have by then cemented your spot with the two of them. So, did yeah. you at that point have a uh, number one, or were they both kind of like one and two? Or I, yeah, both? I didn't really yeah. know. Like we we did a questionnaire round two. One of the questions was who is your number one, and they of course you didn't have to answer it if you didn't want to. Like that was part of like the last part of the challenge, and you would only get a point if you decided to answer. Um, both Josh and Shane wrote me as their number one. And I believe I put Shane as my number one, but that was early on in the game and I hadn't really cemented anything yet. And I honestly didn't know who to put. I was actually going back and forth between Josh and Shane for that question. So really at that point, I didn't really know who was my like legitimate number one. Like I just considered both of them as like a, like they were my people, you know, like mm -hmm. I was like, they were like both my number ones. And I was like, it's, you can't really say that, but like they kind of were like, I didn't, <laughs> it was like, I, I really couldn't choose. I really couldn't choose. Like, I feel like I was trying to be, I was trying to help them both throughout the game. And I was trying to like, I told them both everything. Like I didn't hide anything from either one of them. Like they both knew all the information I knew. And so I wasn't being exclusive to one or the other. Um, so yeah, I just, I just, Love them both so much. Yeah, and I think you guys had a great, I don't know if you uh, realized, but for my watching, it looked like the three of you really tried to cover the ground with everybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like Shane had yeah. uh, Madison and Jackie, mm -hmm. and then you uh, pretty much had like Tessa at one point, and then kind of other people, and then uh, Josh had Kadia and... Derek for sure. Yeah, for sure. It was Kadia, Derek, and he had Jace too. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, Shane had Jackie and Madison. And I was more like kind of in between the two. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't really have a whole, honestly, I didn't really have a whole lot of people other than Josh and Shane and a little bit yeah. of Derek. Like I didn't really have like any of their specific alliances. It, like, cause they did, I didn't. Um, and maybe that was my downfall in the end, but um, I don't know. I just, I feel like there wasn't like time. Like it was so fast paced. I just, I was just like, how are you making like other alliances? Like, <laughs> like what's going on here? I yeah. think like you two had a secret headquarter in the bathroom, every shot in the yes. bathroom. Yes. Wait, oh yeah, oh my gosh. Okay, so that was in like the, the master bedroom. And that room was really, like that master bedroom was awesome. So like I slept in that king bed by myself for like two oh. nights in a row, it was awesome. But I just like, I was just, like, I'm sleeping here. Lucky? <laughs> I just told everybody I'm sleeping there. Because oh. <laughs> first night I had a couch, like when we, before we filmed, I had a couch and I was like, I'm not doing a couch again. Oh, yeah. I was like, Wesley, can I sleep in a bed? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, that's fine. And so then like people were getting eliminated. And so downstairs there was, um like the eliminated players like bedroom and it was a big like room with a bunch of bunk beds and so okay. most of them slept down there and then the rest of us who were still playing slept upstairs and so there was plenty of beds upstairs there was like two king beds and a queen bed and so there's there plenty of room and so i was like kind of sleep on the bed and so yeah i did but <laughs> in that room was the bathroom that most people were talking in because it was the biggest bathroom and there was like a little tub to sit on and like yeah we kept going in there to strategize for some reason i don't know why <laughs> We just ended up there. Kind of like secluded, like people wouldn't see you going in kind there. Of, kind of, there. yeah. Cause it was like, it was cause like the mat. So whenever you walked like that little room, that little hallway you walk in to get to all those bedrooms to strategize, it's like a little, like you walk in and there's one, two, three bedrooms. So the very far right was the master bedroom. So it's a little bit off on its own and then the bathroom inside of it. So I guess it was the most like far away place to get to. Um, 
but there was other places to go to. So I, I don't know why we all like <laughs> went there. <laughs> a lot of the times, and a few of the other cast members were like, oh, we saw the three of them together, and then they go into a room and then disperse and then go together and disperse. Like, <laughs> we had a lot of quick meetings. I don't know if it was all in that bathroom per se, but. Yeah, I think what's funny is like, I didn't know who was on to us. Like, I didn't know if anybody was really catching on to us working together. Like, whenever Connor said on the episode that he noticed us working together, that was the first time I knew of anybody that knew of us like that like understood what was happening so like he caught on apparently very quickly but he never used it to his advantage like he never really told anybody else or like tried to you know get people on board to split us up or anything so i was kind of surprised about that like hearing that he knew but didn't like do anything about it and then um yeah like we tried really hard to stay away from each other like as much as possible like yeah we'd have really quick meetings like it'd be like okay we're going to this person okay see ya or like hey this person did this okay bye like mm -hmm. it was very much like we were floating around a lot like trying to get to other conversations and other people and just like kind of spread messages or get more information yeah, yeah so this this <laughs> takes us back to um the totem pole placement and um luke's big hooray change the switch <laughs> and everything and then we are back. Luke gets saved, and there's a twist. Um, the bottom five playing a challenge, and then Madison is the one to go home. Oh, yes. Home, okay. Unable yeah. to use her cards. Ooh. So, yeah. Which... So, <laughs> looking back on the first few rounds, knowing that Madison had these cards, like, I was like, we look so stupid. Like, why did we even think that we could get her to use these cards? And but why would we not even try to vote her out? That makes no sense. Like the whole premise of it is just so dumb. Like like in the moment, it was like this big strategy thing, and it was like, yeah, we're gonna like fake her out and like get her to use these cards, and then we're gonna we'll, we'll flush a card out. But it's like we could have just voted her out. Like why did we not just vote her out? Like it, it made no sense. And I feel like a lot of people felt the same way. Not not just like people who played, but like fans too were like, what the hell? Like what, what were you doing? Like <laughs> what was the where's the strategy? Like I don't get it. Like. And definitely looking back on it now, I'm like, that was dumb. Like we, we should have done that a long time ago because she never even used her cards. Like, and even if she used her card, it would have been flushed either way. So like, what, mm -hmm. what was the point in voting on Asher and Data? There was no point. So like, that's one thing I definitely like am sad about that that happened because like, I would have liked Asher and Data to stay longer because their reasoning for going out was like so ridiculous and not necessary. So that was bad. And yeah, I was, I felt terrible about that. But um, see, so seeing that the challenge was a potentially to get Madison out, like I was definitely, I was definitely excited for that purpose, just because she has two cards, and we knew that one of the cards was canceling votes, mm -hmm. and so she would have like, she would have gone really far had she stayed in the game. So I was hoping for her to leave because of those cards, not because mm -hmm. of, not because of her. We love you, Madison. Um, mm -hmm. And everybody felt the same way. It was just like it was like a game situation. Cards were in play that were very powerful, and so we're like, we got to get this girl out. Um, so me and Shane and Josh, is there anybody else? Who else is there? Is that it? Dude, we're the only, Shane. We're the only sa safe, people who were safe that round. Was it just me, Shane and Josh? Yeah, uh, Jace was safe too, I think. I think he yes. was on. Yeah, you're right, yeah. I don't me, have the full list with me, but. No, you're, you're correct. It's yeah, me, Shane, Josh, and Jace. We were sitting on the couch and we were able to kind of see the challenge. Like we were sitting in the living room, like peeking into the, into that door that goes to the kitchen. So mm -hmm. we're kind of like looking in to see what would happen. And we couldn't see like, we knew it was the chopstick situation, but we couldn't really tell like who was winning or anything. And so when Madison lost, like like Wesley said, like, you know, Madison, I'm sorry, you're eliminated. Um, yeah, she like literally ran out of the house. Like she didn't stop to say goodbye. Like she was crying I felt really bad, but she, she was just out the door and it was silent. It was like mm -hmm. dead silent whenever she left. Like nobody said anything and she was just gone. <laughs> Um, so we were all sitting on the couch, like, oh my God, like, yikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're like, okay, well, that happened. Um. Yeah, we, did a, we did get a sit down with Madison earlier, too. Um, she found the whole experience to be great. You know, that's just how it is in these live games. You know, you're super hyped up, there's super, something super dramatic happens. And she walked out, and when she walked out, she looks back at it like, yeah, that's what I get. Um, <laughs> that's what you get. Cause she like felt like she was just by herself the entire game. Every alliance she had, it never right. panned out. So right. she, she, 
And she also slipped a little um, hint along the way. You know, we congratulated her for getting engaged. She said somebody else in the yeah. cast <laughs> might have gotten engaged at the same time. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Fun fact, we actually got engaged on the same day. <laughs> really? Yeah. <That's> great. <laughs> so we did take a little bit of time. She, so, but this is about you. Um, how did it happen? Do you want to share? Like, was the big sure. like, hot air balloon or oh my God. tigers? Or any, uh, what happened? What's up? So, um, my fiance and I, we have been dating for four years now. And so we already talked about like, we were knew we we're going to get engaged sometime soon. And that was like the plan. So we like, so I knew it was coming at some point cause we wanted to move in together. And I was like, I want to wait till we're engaged. Um, so I knew it was coming and we, went on um, like a date night and I'm from San Antonio. And so there's this really awesome bridge. It's called Hay Street Bridge where it's like right off of downtown. So when you're on top of it, you can see the whole skyline of downtown. It's really nice. And he was like, you want to go for a walk after dinner? I was like, yeah, sure. And then he was like, why don't we go to the bridge? I was like, okay. Cause we hadn't we had been there in forever. And I was like, all right, I guess we'll go to the bridge. And so we got on the bridge and we we're just walking and I was taking like random pictures of stuff. And then he like grabbed my hands. He was like, so you know what's about to happen, right? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it was really sweet, and yeah, of course he got on one knee and asked me to marry him. And my Aww. little sister was hiding behind a trash can, taking like secret pictures of the whole thing. I, love <laughs> it. I didn't know she was there. It's like uh, she did a really good job of hiding because I did not see her at all. So she took all like the surprise pictures, and like it was awesome. She she showed up with a little camera, and I was like, oh my god, like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was really sweet. So yeah, we're excited. <laughs> it's so funny. You know everything that's going on in this game, and then you're like, "Well, sure, we'll go take a walk." I don't find that suspicious or anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because we'll I was thinking about it. Sure. I, I was like, hmm, and I was like mm -hmm. thinking about it, and I was like, "It's not <laughs> happening now." I'm gonna be really disappointed. <laughs> it was like it was like all like everything was coming together, you know. And I was like, mm. <laughs> but no, it was perfect. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, once again, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, so Madison is eliminated from that challenge with the mm -hmm. chopsticks. Um, it leaves us to the vote. And this yes. is what we kind of touched on earlier. Um, it's a tie vote. Yes. Jackie, Luke. Yes. Um, two people that knew each other from the game. They were mm -hmm. each other's baggage, essentially, mm -hmm. entering the game. So this is a really tough one. Yes. Um, it's your alliance. And then Jace, Kadia. And then Derek on the other side. Right. How'd that go? So it was definitely interesting to see how, first off, how Luke, or was it Jackie? Who saved who? Good Lord. Jackie saved Luke. Jackie saved Luke. Right. Just the and, same round. And that was great because whenever we first learned about the whole baggage situation and I had asked Jackie, like, who you know it's you know luke's your baggage like what's what happened there and she was talking about how they used to be great friends and now they don't really talk anymore and they just don't really like each other anymore and i was like that really sucks i'm so sorry but like as the game went on you can tell they were like kind of rekindling their friendship a little bit and they were like working things out and i guess they had a really nice long talk when there wasn't filming going on and so they kind of reconciled a little bit so then i think jackie saving luke was like a really nice like kind of arc to the whole thing going on so that was really sweet but um, so it was definitely interesting to see now it's the two of them, like one of them's going to go home. And for me, like, I didn't know at first what I wanted to do. Like I, at first I think wanted to vote. Yeah. I think I, I, I did want to vote for Luke. Cause yeah. Cause I like Jackie and I, I didn't think she deserved to go home yet. Um, and I knew that Luke wasn't really working with me and I felt like Jackie maybe had more of an opportunity to work with me. And I wanted to again, help her for her helping me. And so we knew it was going to be a tie, which I was really nervous about because if we were to have tied, it would be kind of like Survivor. We would basically like draw rocks. Like it would be like a wheel um, if we would go home. And I personally did not want my game to end from a wheel or like by random choice. Like I just don't want to do that. And so I already knew that if there was going to be a revote where I knew it was going to be a tie again, I was going to break the tie and I was going to vote for Jackie to send her home. Um, as much as I love her and I wanted to like go with it and continue to like keep her like safe and like push the tie again. Like I just, there was not enough people left in the game for it to be a good chance to like guarantee your safety at that point. If a wheel were to have happened because Luke and Jackie would have been safe. Obviously um, 
Josh would have been safe. Mm -hmm. So it would have been like four people really like left to be going home. That's like a horrible like chance. So I was like, no, I'm good. But um, it was okay though, because Jackie kind of like just told everybody, Hey, like, I'm good. Like if you want to put me out, like I'm good. Like, I don't want you guys to ruin your game for me. And I thought that was really awesome. Like for her to, to step up like that and just to be like, Hey guys, like, it's fine. Like, don't worry about it. Like that was really cool of her. Um, so I definitely give her a lot of props for that. And cause I definitely helped save my game at that point because there was a huge shot. I could have gone home that round if we were to have continued that tie um, or even to the, to the Revo, because if we did the Revo, knowing that there might've been a tie and, and I were to be the one to break it cause I would have broken it. Um, then that could have been a target on my back. Yeah. So that yeah. definitely helped me out a lot. Well, thanks, Jackie. I hear um, mm -hmm. Luke and Jackie are have rekindled some of their friendship um, yeah. from the conversation we had, and they get along great now. Yeah, so we, like the power of these games. Like I know it's so awesome. You, I'm so you glad build rifts, again. and then you can like come back together, yeah. and then even if you have rifts in the game, you know you can still like be friends afterwards. Oh, so. for sure. It's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's def it, it does become personal at some points where it's just where it's. Mm. I mean, it's hard to explain like it's personal not because of game decisions it's personal because of the friendships that you make and the relationships that you make so some of the game decisions can seem personal because you make these relationships with these people but at the end of the day it's your the strength of your relationships outweighs the game moves that happen you know unless they were done like purposefully like maliciously but like usually that's not the case yeah um it's just like game moves which you can you have to respect that because if you play these games you have to expect that and you have to respect that so it is what it is. It is what it is. So it is we bring this to the next day. Um, you finally get a little yes. bit of rest. You can oh my God. sleep. <laughs> yes, thank God. <laughs> it, we were all so freaking tired. Like before um, the challenge where we were running, like doing the uh, the unscrambling, we thought we were done for the night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was like, nope, we got it. We were like, are you kidding me? We're like, we have another round. We're like, let us go to bed. We were so tired. <laughs> But oh my god, yeah. So like making it to day two was like a total relief, and like I felt like such an accomplishment because I was like, oh my god, I were like that was such a nuts like first day. Like we were all just crazy running around, and like it was so so stressful. So like I was so happy to make it to day two. I was like, oh my god, like I can do this. Like we're so close. Like I can do this. Now I'm wondering, like what happened like after the cameras cut out? Like after like I, mean, I don't know if Wes went to bed or whatnot because it's the five of you I think now. Um, you're just like in the house. Are you yes. still talking game? Are you still mm -hmm. at five? I'm bad with math. So no, Wesley was wanting to make sure that whenever we talk strategy, we do it in front of a camera. So that way mm -hmm. the viewers can understand our point of view. So that way conversations don't happen. And like, you know, things happen in the game and people are like, wait, what happened? Like there's no continuity. So you wanted to make sure that like everything kind of flowed together nicely and that like whenever we weren't on camera, we were making sure that we were just talking about life and hanging out. And there was producers everywhere so that they could monitor like what we were you know talking about. Yeah. So they made sure that we were, you know, following the rules and all that. But yeah, we were just like chilling out at night, which is really nice. Like there was a hot tub in the back and there was a foosball table and there was like a air hockey table and TV. And like, so it was a lot of fun. Like it was a really cool time. So it's a little bit different than Melbourne Survivor, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, definitely a really nice airbnb <laughs> <laughs> a little bit different than surviving on the australian outback yeah uh -huh. <laughs> no it was super nice it was really it was really awesome different types of vacations for everyone that's what live right. reality games offer exactly. you know hot tub or middle of the woods it's your pick yeah <laughs> So beginning in the morning, you guys are all dressed up in like your outdoors outfit. You're ready yes. to get your game on, and you got your game on. Like, yeah. oh my god, nice job! You you were okay. the first person to figure out the puzzle <laughs> and race up the little. I say little hill, but it, it looked very large. Yeah, um, it was a pretty big hill actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was really steep. So like, what's your thought? Like you were the first one up. You were the first one actually making some progress on this. Yeah, you, you got it. So. That so going back a tiny bit that night mm -hmm. when I was yeah. going to bed, like I I first I was like I don't know what to do tomorrow. I was like I don't know like what strategy to take, like how we're gonna get here to to. <laughs> so maybe the Big Brother style is more yeah. suitable for Josh here as well. So I was trying to figure out like how we're gonna get to final three, like me, Josh, and Shane. That was my goal, the three of us to get to the end. And I was like, how are we gonna do this? Like we need to figure out how to get past like 
Jace and his crew, right? And so I was like thinking, okay, one of us has to win a Southern Totem Pole and we need to break up the Kadia, Jace and Luke train. I did not know at that point that Derek was still like truly in the middle. Like I know he was leaning more towards Kadia, Jace and Luke at that point, but I was like, maybe we can get him to come to our side and like, you know, really solidify this and make this official and like, just go with it. And cause we can make some moves here. And so that was my agenda coming in, like when I woke up in the morning. So like, as soon as we got to the, the challenge, I started talking to Josh and Shane about it. Try, I talked to Derek as well. I was like, we got to break them up. Like, let's go. And so doing the challenge, Wes is like, yeah, you can wear your athletic gear if you want to. I was like, great. And then in reality, we should have worn it the very first challenge. Like I was like, I'm wearing jeans and a crop top running up a hill. Like, why am I doing this? And then now I'm walking up a hill in yoga pants and an athletic top. Like, so that was, so we were all so mad. We're like, really? Like we, we're not even running. And well, so on the was, first challenge, I think you were pretty decently dressed compared to some other people. Okay. We've talked true. about like Luke's pants and whatnot and what Tessa was wearing. Like her pants were falling down, but so you were pretty well covered. You, you Anyway, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, but yeah, so, we, so whenever we got to the bottom of the hill and we started doing the challenge, like the blocks were very, very light. Like they were like really soft foam and it was so windy. Like it was, it was about to rain. And so it was just windy everywhere. I was like, this is the worst time to do this challenge. This is awful. And when I was doing it, like I started to get the hang of it, but I was looking around me and nobody else was getting even close. And I was like, okay, maybe I can actually do this. Like I can, I can win this. And when I started walking up the hill, and I got about halfway. I was like, okay, I like legit have this. I was like, I can do this. And then I think it said in the, in the challenge, Josh was like, Sabrina's on you or not. Jace is on you, Sabrina. And I was like, oh God, like, damn it. and I was like, he's like the one person I didn't want to win. Mm-hmm. Like he was the one person I did not want to win because I felt like anybody else I had maybe a shot. Um, but him, like I knew I was going to be in the bottom. Like I, I knew it a hundred percent and he might target me. So I was like, this is going to suck. Um, so I, so I, I saw him out of the corner of my eye starting to pass me and he was walking way faster than I was, but I was, but I knew that if I walked any faster, my blocks were going to fall. Like I knew it. So I was like, I have to go the same pace that I'm going like this entire time or else I'm screwed. So seeing him fall, I was like, Oh, cool. All right. I was like, like great, great i'm way ahead like let's go but then he caught up to me again and then once he passed me i knew it i was like, oh, I was like dang it and then when i dropped i was like well i'm it's, it's over with um so seeing him win was like really discouraging because i was like well it's like we just i was like this sucks like i didn't think my game was like totally over because like i, I don't want to count myself out but like it definitely was not a good feeling and um some of the uh some people were actually up in, in the kitchen windows watching us. They opened up the windows and they were like watching us. It was like Jackie, Tessa, I think Connor was up there, but they were all just like looking out the window while we're doing this challenge. It was just like, hey. Um, but yeah, so whenever you won, I didn't know what to do at that point. Cause like, I still wanted to try it. Hi, Nathan. My number <laughs> one, maybe like Columbus, he wanted to vote me out. <laughs> i just kidding. I love you, Nathan. Um, but yeah, so once we got to the point where Wes was telling us that we have to strategize outside, um, I was like, okay, this is probably gonna be a quick amount of time. Like, I still want to try to make some kind of deal. Like, I'm not like gonna count myself out. I'm just gonna try and go with it. Um, so I did. I t- it's not on film at all for some reason, but yeah, I was talking to him like a good amount and being like, hey man, like I know we haven't worked together, but like I've been trying to. Like, we can still do something if you want to. And um, and he told me he was like, I won't put you at the bottom. And I was like, okay. And I was like, you sure about that? And so like we split up and I talked to other people and went back to him and he was like, yeah, like you're good. And I was like, okay, like uh, whatever you say. Cause he's been like decently honest with like things he said, like he's been honest with like who he's put at the bottom and stuff. So I was like, maybe I'll trust it. And I mean, even though I was in like the, I mean, you can't really avoid the bottom five at that point. So mm-hmm. I knew it was going to be obviously in the bottom five, but I was like, pretty pleasantly surprised that I wasn't in the bottom bottom. Like I was definitely like half expecting it, half not because he told me it wasn't gonna happen. So when it did happen, I was like, well, okay, maybe maybe this is good. Maybe we can kind of roll with this. Um, But definitely didn't expect Derek to be at the bottom. I really did not think that that was gonna happen. I thought it was gonna be Shane, honestly. Um, And that would have been really terrible. But yeah, I was super shocked it was Derek. and more shocked now watching it back and seeing how close Derek thought he was with Jace and how Jace promised him that he wasn't going to be at the very bottom. Like I didn't know that conversation happened. So seeing that I was like, okay, Derek had very well reason to be upset about that. Um, Cause I didn't know the whole backstory on it. And so I was like, Oh my gosh, that's awful. 
<laughs> and I was like, Jay Stun did messed up. Yeah. Like that was a terrible move. And like, I just don't understand because watching him play season two, he was a great strategist, played a great game. And then um, I don't know what happened. This, like he, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, mean, I love, I mean, I love Jason. He's a great guy, but like, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know the thinking there. Like, I know he like kind of explained it like in his confessional, but I still was like, I don't know about that, bud. Like that, yeah. that was kind of, that wasn't great. And so, and then when Derek came, oh my gosh, like that whole round, I still cannot believe that Jace blew up his entire alliance the round that he's topped the totem pole. I still mm -hmm. can't believe it. Like, wow. Like obviously me and Josh and Shane got real lucky on that one. Uh, more so me and Shane because he was working with Josh a little bit. Um, but dang, yeah. So that happened. But whenever, so I knew that Derek had that card, the moving up the two places because he found it when I was in the room. So oh, he, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, so he showed me immediately um, whenever he found it. And I think he showed, he showed Kadia and maybe Josh. So a couple people knew he had it, um, but Jace didn't know that he had it. So I feel like if Jace knew he had it, yeah, they were. <laughs> but <laughs> yes. But uh, maybe next week we're gonna find out why. So Jace, if you want to explain it, you let us know. I'll start getting to Jace. Yes, Derek. <laughs> I feel like if if Jace had known about Derek's card, he may not have done that. Mm -hmm. But he didn't know, and so that yeah, it makes sense to me is why that was he thought that was gonna be okay, but. So, so Gadia in the bottom, yeah, because what Shane Shane was a switch, yeah, we all knew it. Like we we knew it was gonna be him because it was yeah. ja it was Jackie and Madison like that round. So like, duh, like it's gonna be him. Um, and we all told everybody like it's gonna be Shane. Like, like it's gonna be like do what you want to do, but it's gonna be Shane. Um, so what he switched himself, right? Himself, yeah, that's right. He switched, I... yeah, he switched himself and and Kadia, mm -hmm. and then and then Jarek moved up, so Kadia went down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So Kadia's bottom. Yes. Okay. So we were all standing there. And whenever Kadia was trying to make her decision for her defender, um, I had a feeling she would pick Derek, but we did not know that you can pick the top of the totem pole as your defender. Oh, yeah. Oh. We didn't know that rule. Yeah, oh, so, I don't yeah. think at home we knew that we're all even no, considered it. I yeah. had no idea. And so Wes told us later that, yeah, you can do that. And we we're like, like, cause of course, Jason's like, what the hell? Like, you know, like I literally could have saved her because mm -hmm. he would have, he would have mm -hmm. saved her had she chosen him. And that would have been a totally different story and like a, a different, you know, I think it would have been game. a whole different game. Yes. Actually. Yeah. It would have been a huge difference. And so like, I, none of us knew that that was like a possible thing. And so whenever we found out that it was, yeah, like obviously Jason and were very upset, like notably, but like, oh my gosh. So whenever she picked Derek, so at that point, I still didn't know that Derek was at first working more so with Jace and Kadia and Luke at that point. He was leaning more towards that alliance than, than continue with us. Um, I'm not I sure, know. Josh. Yeah. I honestly don't know. I, they but had different Wes told us it was. Too, so. <laughs> yeah, because Wes told us it was. But um, I didn't know that before him putting Derek at the bottom that Derek was leaning more towards their alliance than me, Josh and Shane. I didn't know it at that point. I thought Derek was still leaning more towards us. So whenever Kadia picked him, like Derek was standing like, like, cause it was like Derek could, or is Kadia, Derek and myself? No, Kadia, myself and Derek mm -hmm. um, standing like next to each other. And so whenever she chose Derek, I like whispered to Derek and I was like, what are you gonna do? And he was like, I'm sending her home. And I was like, I was like, okay. I was like, okay. And I, I was, I, of course I was, well, again, I love Kadia, but like, I was hoping that he would, because that would help my lines out quite a bit. And yeah. that would solidify him wanting to work with us more so than them. And I was like, this is gonna be a huge power shift. Like I really hope he does take power. Um, but knowing what happened beforehand and how close he was to her watching it back, I'm a little bit surprised that he took power, but at the same time I'm not because it also helped him too. Um, move forward in the game. So it's a huge power move, of course, because that takes away Jace's main ally and that ruins his game for the most part. Um, but yeah, I was like, all right, this is good. This is good for me. This is good for Josh, good for Shane. It's even good for Derek. Like we can get through the rest of these people. And like all we had okay. left was Luke and Luke and Jace at that point. And there, we, we knew we had the numbers because Derek was so mad at Jace that we knew he was going to vote 
Luke regardless. And again, we knew because the the defender was um, wait, what was? Because he had to vote. No, that was before. Sorry, that was before. <laughs> whatever, okay. whatever, whatever. Jared had to vote for Luke, but so he already voted for Luke before. So like we knew it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was more so trying them to trying to get votes on somebody else instead of Luke, which ended up being me for some reason. <laughs> it's like what's happening. <laughs> yeah, like that vote round was definitely like we knew we were going to vote for Luke um, mm-hmm. just because he was the only person that we could vote for that we knew was not working with us and was on the other side of the house. So I already basically had my mind up and I think Shane did too. I don't know. If, I don't know if Josh was thinking, you know, one way or the other, but I think he was going to end up voting that way. Like anyways, um, cause he was definitely most in tune with me and Shane than Jace. Um, and Jace was a sinking ship at that point, honestly, because of Kadia going and Derek being so mad at him and yeah. gunning for him. Um, so basically during that vote, like, and we were like, it's going to be Luke, but Luke was, I mean, Luke was actually like really, really good at making points about who to vote for though. He like definitely made like great points of like why we should vote for Shane or Josh. And had I not been as close with Josh and Shane, I feel like I like, I could have voted the other way if I wasn't like, you know, as close to an alliance as I was because Luke made sense. Like he knew that like Josh and Shane were going to get votes in the end. Like he knew they were like playing a great game. So, and I totally understood him. And I was like, you know, you make a lot of sense. Like I totally get it. Like, but I play a very loyal game. And so for me, I already had my mind made up that I wanted to go to the final three with them. And I wasn't going to deviate from that. Um, That's just how I play. I know some of the people would just like chop at the end because it's better for your votes. But like, I don't know. I just feel like that's just how I like to play. I just, I just like play very, loyal and honest yeah, but well, speaking of chopping people at the final three um nathan one of your final picks had a question for you yeah did you make a screen for another um no not really because like i already had such a close bond with josh at the very very beginning you like, don't want to deviate do you think josh played a really scary game and maybe you should have switched at that point um for me to win the game probably like, I think it would have been smart to take Josh out, like, for sure. Like, I, I don't, like, doubt that, like, he it would have been a good decision. But, like, I don't know. I just feel like if that would have happened, like, I feel like there definitely would have been different outcomes of, like, who would have been in the final three, too. Mm-hmm. Um, because the votes would have been more even at that point if Josh went. And Derek could have flipped again. Like, he could have gone to the other side again and voted out, you know, me or Shane. Um, so I don't think I would have been as much of a guarantee for final three at that point, if I voted out Josh. I think my game would have been more in jeopardy if that happened. I think you had the loyalty aspect going 100%. I think that you Mm -hmm. had a great threesome, and you three were working, like, amazing together, so. Yeah, and I was like, I don't want to, like, I just didn't see the point. Like like I said, the only thing would have been, again, if getting Josh out would have helped my game, but at the same time, I don't think, I think it would have jeopardized my game more so than helped it. I definitely had more of a shot of going home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was kind of a cool like story to watch as well. Like I was, I was hoping that like you guys would turn on each other. But... <laughs> That's just how Liz plays, okay? <laughs> but um, it was cool. Like I, yeah, I liked that. Like we had that that like trio, the real trio, right from the start, um, <laughs> making it through and being yeah. under the radar and and stuff. And yeah, yeah. it was no, a cool. I- yeah, I love them so much. Like we talk all the time, and like they're like, they're they're the best. Like I miss them so much. Like it really sucks to like we be able to see each other. We live literally on opposite side of the country. Like Josh is in LA, I'm in Texas, and then Josh is in Florida. <laughs> so we're like bam, 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 like all the way across the country. So it's like uh, like I want to see them so bad. It sucks. Uh, Nathan, well, let's get to your question later. Oh, hold on, let's hide that from. Oh, hold on, no, no, no. <laughs> real question, Nathan. Nathan, what are you doing later? Hey, uh, we might have a spot here for you. Um, <laughs> So, okay, so let's see. Luke goes home, final four, final four challenge. Yes. Um, but I do want to say that Josh had a cute little, like, fake out when he was like, Oh, my God. I, I, was want- to mm. I wanted him to punch him in the face. Like, I was so, like, <laughs> we were, so whenever, like, at the very end of that vote out, like, they kind of show it in filming when Derek busts in the door, like, whenever I'm talking to Jace. And I was like, trying to make some kind of, like, final deal with Jace at that point. And then Derek was like, they're voting you out. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> like, like he like busted the door. It was hilarious. And I was just like, oh my God. And I trusted him. I was like, yeah, I gotta go, gotta go. And um, that's why I knew to play my exposed cards. I could at least see if it was like true and like make sure like that was happening. And it did. So I was like, mm. and so whenever Josh like said that, I was like, I was like, you better not. Like, I was like, I'm really still mad. I was like, I'm not gonna vote for you if you do that to me. Yeah, I feel like overall in this season, like all the cards were played so perfectly. Even mm -hmm. Madison going home with two cards on a challenge that she couldn't use her cards. Right. Those cards like affected that. All the cards were played perfectly. Yeah. In some weird aspect, you know? Yeah. How it all worked I'm definitely out. Yeah. I'm definitely happy with how the cards worked out because it definitely made for a lot of like fun twists and like really like good moments and funny stuff. So yeah, I think it worked out pretty well. Uh, let's see here. So final six, uh, sorry, challenge six is what I meant to say. It's yes. the, um, the, like the trivia kind of thing, like mm -hmm. which house guest did this. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was so proud of myself. Like that was another challenge where I was like, I got this. Like it's another puzzle, like memory and, Big Brother Columbus, when I was on, basically I bombed the memory portion. Nathan killed it. He got like, what, he got a hundred? I don't freaking know, but he did great. And I did so horribly. Like, and I was like, okay, I need to learn my lesson. I need to remember things that happen in the game. If I don't, like there's gonna be a challenge at the end. I'm gonna suck at it again. So let's figure this out. So the entire time before the final challenge, we were all holed up in the, um, the master bedroom. And we were allowed to talk or like nothing like, you know, strategy wise, but um, we basically, we were all trying to memorize the order of how things happen in the game. So we were trying to remember like who was eliminated in what round and like what the challenge, who won each challenge, who was the switch, who was the defender. Cause we thought a hundred percent it was going to be that. We thought it was going to be like, yeah, who was the defender round three or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so that was our entire premise of studying the game, but it was nothing like that. Like it was really random things that like we didn't, realize would be important. And for me, like, I was really surprised at how many that I did knew. Um, apparently, so the rule of the game was we had two chances to check our answers. So if you say, like, check, they'll tell you, they will only tell you if the whole thing is right, or if the whole thing is wrong. They wouldn't say how many like you got correct. Right. So that was the only thing. So you could check and they'd be like, wrong. Like, okay. So you just play with it again. And then your second check was considered your time stopped. And I think it was just like, because if somebody had like a tie, it'd be whoever got it the fastest would win. So you were working with time, but at the same time, like you still want to be the most correct. But we didn't know how many we got correct until Wesley announced it at the end. Um, so apparently, after my first check, I had five out of six correct. And then oh, I moved wow. it and then got four. So I was like, dang it. Like I could have, like I could have, I was like, thank God I still won. Like, <laughs> cause I didn't know I got like five right. I was like, oh Lord. Um, but yeah, so apparently I did, I did like better than I thought. But um, there was one particular question that I knew, like, I think I was the only one who got right where it was what color were Kadia's blocks during the, like the game. And that, that was like was the, focused on, yeah. Yeah, that was the first thing I noticed during that challenge. Cause I noticed that we all had different colors and I was like, oh, I have yellow. I think I had yellow. And then Luke had like two different colors. He had like a blue and red and then Kadia had purple. And then I was like, cause I was, I was like, oh, like Luke's like blocks are really cool. What color do I have? Oh, what color do you have? And I was just like thinking about it in my head. So I was like, oh, I know this one. I was like, that was the only one I was like, yes, I got this. <laughs> the other ones were definitely a lot of thinking, but yeah. So I'm really happy I won that. Cause like, it was definitely going to be very hard to get through the last round of the game because at that point we did not know that we were playing a whole nother round because season one and season two, mm -hmm. it was just the final person just takes the final two with them or to make the final three. So we didn't know it was going to be an entire round. Um, so I was anticipating like I got to win this to like 100% keep myself safe because if, if I, myself, Josh or Shane don't win, like I'm out 100%. Yeah. Um, so I was really excited. I was like, okay, I feel so much better now. Like I'm final three. This is great. But like, it was definitely going to be a hard decision, which I thought I was going to have to make. Um, so definitely I was, I was excited that it would be another round. Cause like, especially just cause I was safe. Like I don't have to deal with it. So I can just say, yeah. okay, like, well, let's just go through it and see what happens kind of thing. So it was definitely more exciting for sure. So what was your thought process? Like it was probably pretty cut and dry. I'm assuming you knew how, Kind of like we definitely knew we wanted Jace first, um, yeah. just because I mean that just made the most sense for us. Um, and we, but we knew he was going to be the switch, 
because we were like, that's pretty obvious that he's going to be the switch. Um, so we knew he wouldn't be like in the bottom bottom um, because of the switch. Um, so which happened. And then what happened after that? Who was, uh, oh. oh yeah. Shane was in the bottom and then picked Derek as his defender, which mm-hmm. I did not expect at all. Like, of course I, I thought he was, yeah. I, I don't, I, yeah. I don't remember his thought process on that. Cause he didn't tell me or Josh that. And like right before I did the placement, like I told both of them, I was like, if you guys end up in the bottom, cause we knew that Jace would be the switch. I was like, if you guys are in the bottom, please save each other. I was like, we have to do that. Like, you all have to save each other. And they were like, yeah, we're going to do it. So then when Shane picked Derek, I was like, and even Josh was like, <laughs> like, we were like, what? like what's happening here? Like, I, I think I made a face too. I was like, what? <laughs> um, so I was really scared. I was like, Oh my God. I was like, Derek's going to send J- like Shane home. Like, this, this is awful. Mm-hmm. So whenever he chose to save Shane, I was completely shocked. And I don't know, like I thought it would be better for his own game to, to take out Shane. So I know he said it before, like in recent, like, stuff that we've done like with the totem pole like he said that's the one thing he wishes he did differently was mm-hmm. to not save shane um i know things are different like in the games like you know how like our mindset is and stuff um, would have shut us. yeah totally so it's like it's something like to dwell on um but seeing that shane was safe i was like oh my gosh like we can totally do this like obviously jace is gonna go home <laughs> like that's happening which it did because of the whole re-ring system mm-hmm. um so jace was out um and then just having derek left like Derek also made really good points on why we should vote out. Was it Shane? I don't know. Cause I remember he said, I think he said both names. I don't even freaking remember. I, who there was were a lot. I think everyone's name was thrown out at the end. Though. I feel like, yeah. I can't remember mm-hmm. who he was like totally pitching to me. I can't remember if it was Josh or Shane. Um, it was probably Shane um, because he said he was a good social threat or he was like a big social threat and that he'd have a lot of votes in the jury, which he, you know, it makes sense um he didn't make then, anybody mad i think that was his biggest argument right yeah so like he let's say he had good points for sure but again i wanted to play the loyal game and i wanted to go with the people that i was working really really closely with and so and also i really truly thought that if derek made it to final three he would win the game like i think that even though he might have made some enemies people might have not liked the way he played like he was definitely like a huge influence in the game he made huge power moves he was you know very vocal with what he was going to do like he didn't really lie like he was like he was a big like player. And so I, if I was in the jury, I would have voted for Derek like to win, honestly, like, cause he like played, a, I think he played a great game. Like he was very like, like he, I don't know, he was great. So that I was my a very powerful game for the yeah. entire game. Like exactly. Like literally the entire, yeah, yeah, literally the, the entire game. Oh my God. But yeah, <laughs> I really do think like if Derek made it, he would have won. So that's why I didn't want to like keep him because I think he would have been a, a person that would have gotten a decent amount of jury votes for sure. And he would have had like, probably would have had Kadia and Luke cause he was working with them. And then everybody else would have been like, Oh yeah. Like you made all these moves and he probably would have, cause he's a great talker too. So like he would have been mm-hmm. able to like make a great speech and like really explain his game and like what he was doing. So like, I could totally see that happening. Mm-hmm. So that was my main, like other like reason why not just because of my alliance, but like also because of that reason too. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Congratulations, final, final three. Yay. <laughs> so, um, the jury portion seemed really um, a shorter than a lot of the other episodes. Yeah. Been. Like, um, was there more that happened, or was it just? It seemed pretty quick, I guess. Um, I don't think that because we we weren't there for for jury talking. Um, do you mean like the questioning or like the jury the round table? Yeah. It yeah, seemed that very actually like, was kind of short. Okay. Yeah, because whenever we were waiting, because we were waiting, the three of us were waiting downstairs while the jury roundtable was happening. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that was a pretty decent amount of time. So, yeah, I was expecting a little bit longer of an actual jury questioning. Because I think it was also kind of short, too. I felt like that was, because everything that happened was basically what happened. Like, there wasn't anything that was cut. Um, yeah, that was pretty much what happened. So, whenever all the questions were done, I was like, oh, okay, we're done. Like, <laughs> I was also kind of, like, surprised. And, yeah, because almost everybody... I think Jace was the only one who didn't ask a question. Mm-hmm. I think everybody else did. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just, yeah, it was pretty succinct. Like, I feel like, I think it's more so because each of our individual speeches weren't super, super long. And it's like, we kind of got to the point. Um, so I think that's why yeah. it wasn't quite as long as other other shows. We've got a question, another question here from Nathan. 
uh, saying which which fights did you think you could get? Um, let's see, who was on jury? It was Luke, Jackie, Madison, Kadia, Derek, Jace, Jace. There's one more. Connor. Connor. That's right. Okay. I think I could have gotten Connor's vote. I think I could have potentially gotten Jace's vote. I think I could have gotten maybe Jackie's vote. Um, those are the ones I was kind of thinking in my head. Cause I didn't know how closely Jace was working with Josh and I didn't realize how closely Jackie was working with Shane. Mm -hmm. Um, Connor was kind of a wild card. So I don't know where his head was at. Mm -hmm. Um, so I thought I was going to get at least a couple of votes. And I think especially after my jury speech, cause I thought, I thought I had a, a good speech. Um, so I think I was thinking, I was feeling pretty good after jury questioning, honestly, like I felt, I felt like something was going to happen. I was, I wasn't sure if I was going to win. Um, but I definitely felt like I could have gotten a couple of votes. Almost. Almost. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, you know, saying like, feel like, feel like you deserved a, a few votes and stuff, but often in a final three, that's just what happens. Someone gets yeah. the votes that would have gone to them, go to someone else. Right. And it's one of those things too, where I'm like, I'm not like at the moment, like I was upset. Like I definitely like left the room pretty and like quickly after it happened. Cause I was like, man, I was like, what else could I have done? And I was like, I feel like I played a good game and I feel like I had a good jury session and like I had a good final speech. And I was like, what? Like what's going on? And like, I just feel like maybe my game because it was under the radar. Maybe people appreciate a little more social and like kind of flashier like moves, like more like out in the open moves. I guess I should I should, I should say, as opposed to like behind the scenes moves. Mm -hmm. And because like I said, I feel like I played really really similar games to Paper like Columbus, and I won that game. So it's like, why didn't it translate as well to this game? Mm -hmm. And that was that really like messed with my head a little bit. Cause I was like, why? Like, that doesn't make yeah. sense to me. I was like, why am I like not doing as well? I mean, of course I made final three, but like, why did I get any votes? Like, I was gonna say, you made it to the end. Like the strategy yeah. did work. Right. And it didn't get the same appeal, I guess. Different right. audience. Maybe. Like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's what I mean. It's like, I don't fault any jury members for the way they vote in any game because a jury member, like your vote is like you're right in your game. So like, you can't be mad at any jury member for their vote because that's their right in the game. That's what they, you know, they made it there. They deserved it. And that's what they get. And so you can't be pissed off at somebody not voting for you. And so I'm never mad at the jury for not voting for me. Like I definitely believe I deserved a vote. I don't think I was robbed of winning the game. I think Josh wholly deserved to win because he did play a more social and more intertwined game than I did. And he, he deserved it a hundred percent. Like, I don't think I was robbed of a win. Like, I definitely think I was robbed of a vote though. Like I, I will, I will push forward with that. Like I said, I think I played a great game and mm -hmm. um, it sucks that it didn't end up that way. And it sucks that it just wasn't, like, yeah, like you said, the appeal of my game to the jury, like, I understand that. Um, and again, it's all different people. It's a different game. It's just different circumstances. So mm -hmm. I understand it. But at the same time, I was like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this sucks. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think they, because Josh had, like, a power play when he was top of the totem pole. Shane had that big card, like, the big yeah. shocker of that. So they definitely, yeah. and kind of what we noted earlier, like, they all had those little mini alliances on the side that helped yeah. them out, essentially, yeah. at and the I, end. Yeah. And I think that's what messed me up, was not having a little more of a closer alliance, like, besides my my three people. Because you're right, because all those the side alliances voted for those two people. Because like mm -hmm. Jackie Madison, Jackie Madison voted for Shane, and then everybody else voted for Josh. And so like I definitely see where I could have improved on that end, where I could have made more side alliances and like have more people in my corner, because that could have definitely gotten me more votes for sure. Um, so that's the only thing that I definitely definitely could have done a lot better. Um, but I'm so proud of myself, and I like I said, I still think I played a good game. I, I don't. I think like somebody told me that I'm the Michelle Fitzgerald of. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and I was like, I'll take it. Like, <laughs> I, no yeah. <laughs> and I think winning that one of the, the last challenge though, like, I think that was an aspect too, that you were able to get so many more points than everybody else answering questions about knowing <laughs> the other contestants. So yeah. you kind of knew the people mm -hmm. a little bit better and that, I don't know, maybe could have focused on a little bit more saying, Hey, maybe I built so. more yeah, of a like bond. I learned more about you as people. Vote right. for me. 
I for sure, know. for sure. Mm-hmm. No, that totally makes sense. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's one of those things. Yeah, no, yeah. I guess, no. I guess you can't win them all. Nah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Only half of them, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is amazing. Um, so Sabrina, you've been keeping kind of busy with like the the smaller totem pole games they're doing with the Patreon yeah. people. Yeah. How's yeah. that going? Oh, it's so fun. So I won the All Stars mini. Um, so, so that was awesome. I was like, I feel redeemed. So um, two out of three games now. Okay. Um, and then I played another totem pole mini, and I got to the final three. And then I helped oh, Jacob. Hello. Um, um, and then I also helped host two other minis, which was it's a lot of fun playing host. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so how, how do people sign up for these minis? How do they play them? So Okay, so you have to become a patron on the Totempole okay. Patreon. And you can find that link on the main Totem Pole website, um, totempolegame.com, and then you can find a link to the Patreon. Um, you can sign up for as little as one dollar a month. So it's pretty, pretty good. Um, and as and um, I think five dollars a month might be starting for Patreon. I don't know if Wesley's changed or not. Um, but yeah, basically you have to be on Patreon to participate in the minis. Um, there is a mini coming up this Friday, I believe. It's a Halloween spooky time mini. Um, so I don't know if it's completely signed up for yet, but even if it is signed up for, you can still watch it live on YouTube, which is super fun. And um, you can comment live while you're watching. So that's pretty awesome. So it's fun to like keep people engaged while we're off season and get people interested in applying for season four and get people just staying within the community. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, speaking of season four, um, games are casting for next season. Um, we do have mm-hmm. a Facebook group on Live Reality Games specifically. If you search uh, LRG Casting, just type that in. You'll see all the shows and all the games that are casting for next season. So if you want to apply for next season, um, please do. Yes, yeah. please do. We need everybody, all kinds of people, all ages all genders, all races, all ethnicities, everybody. We need everybody to apply. It's a lot of fun. You should do it. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. I think Nate had that one question, and then we'll do, like, final words. So I think, okay. where's that Nate question? Right here. Oh, yeah. I hit the wrong, we hit the same button. Liz, it's all you. I'm not touching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my Sorry. God, Nathan, I cannot with you. <laughs> so he is wondering, which alliance did you like better? Your Big Brother 7 or your... Um, Totem Pole Alliance. Well, apparently ours was fake, Nathan, because you wanted to <laughs> cut me. <laughs> Literally, I had no idea he felt that way until watching it back. And I was like, what? I was like, oh my God, he was going to cut me? Because I was totally, I, I, I would have taken him to the end it, had I won that final challenge. Like, that was my plan. Like, I knew I was going to do that. It's so, like, I was so shocked that he said that. I was like, no, my God. I was like, I can't trust anybody. <laughs> I can't. So uh, oh another shout out to Big Brother Columbus. Big Brother Columbus is um, one of the first ones I started like watching live stream. Like they do a great production and it's super fun to watch live and then it's yes. super fun to watch the whole like production value after. All the videos they do are amazing. Like they do such a great job and great yes. casting because we got you <laughs> and Nathan at least. So hey. <laughs> it's so much fun oh my gosh like i know we were supposed to do um season eight this fall but of course you know everything, coronavirus and everything. Mm-hmm. so hopefully hopefully next year it'll happen but because they're already started planning for season eight so i'm hoping it works out because i want to see the next season really bad so i'm, I'm excited to see what happens so it's gonna be great mm-hmm. me too yeah. uh liz any final thoughts here um, you know, I just need to say, if you're in Australia, um, so neither of you two, sadly, um, but if you're in, in Australia, apply for Backyard Survivor um, in Perth. That is, they're looking for people. I think that they're probably looking especially for women because that's <laughs> yep. all the Survivor games are always looking for women. So do it. Um, it's a great example here of um, a great female um game player you know who you can you can uh look up to and mm-hmm. get inspired from so go do it yeah. <laughs> uh, so sabrina any final thoughts what what do you want people to take from this these live reality games i guess in general like you have i just love how like it gives you the chance to really like I mean, it sounds so cheesy, but like really follow your dreams with these games. Cause like so many people obviously in this community, like love 
Big Brother, maybe not recently, but uh, Survivor and Amazing Race and um, The Challenge and like all these different games that like, it's one of those things where you watch it and you're like, I can never like be on that show. Like, like, it, it, like they have so many people who applied for it, there's no way. So like these shows just give you a taste of that and like show you like you can do it. And like, it's just fun to test yourself and to push yourself and to see mm -hmm. what you're really capable of. And I just love competition in general. And a lot of these people do also like competition. So it's another way just to get like, if you don't like sports or if you don't like, you know, other things like that, it's just another way to get that competitive drive. But I don't know, it's just like, it's a really fun community. Everybody's really awesome. Like I've made a lot of new friends and there is so much beyond just the game itself that you can get from playing these live reality games. And it's super worth it to try one out. So if you've been hesitant, go for it. It's so much fun. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks for everyone on the comments. We got Big Nathan, Josh, Jacob, earlier in the Kyle stopping in. Just everyone, I'm pushing the buttons here, Liz. Sorry, I'm pushing buttons. I said I wasn't going to. Uh, Liz, thanks again for hanging out with us. And Sabrina, thanks again for coming on. And it was great to find out all the background and all your thought process and all the little small things that we missed on the episode of the yeah. Totem Pole. So, all right. Thanks everyone. And everyone have a fantastic night.